Pope Francis has embarked on his longest diplomatic tour. At 5.15 local time this evening, Pope Francis departed from Rome for his tour of Asia. Over the next 11 days, Pope Francis will be visiting Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Timor Leste and Singapore. This will be the longest time Pope Francis will be spending outside the Vatican. The trip involves some 43 hours of flight time. It covers a distance of nearly 32,000 kilometers. It's actually quite a feat for uh, the Pope who is recovering from bronchitis and joint pain, remember. Reports say two nurses and a doctor will be traveling with the Pope. Also, in a first, the Pope's secretaries will be coming along as well. First, the Pope will land in Indonesia, where he will also be meeting the Indonesian president. The Pope will be in Indonesia till Friday, and then he will head to Papua New Guinea, where he will be spending three days. He will be meeting the Prime Minister before heading to Timor Leste, followed by Singapore, where two several engagements and meetings with heads of states are lined up. It's a long, strenuous and extremely busy itinerary. We will get to the details of it as and when the action starts unfolding. But at this point, let's just focus on a stop that is visibly missing from the Pope's itinerary, Hong Kong. Why is the Pope not stopping by Hong Kong as far as this visit is concerned? The theme of the Asia tour is inter-religious harmony. The Vatican says the Pope will be spreading the message of peace. He wants to meet the Catholics of the world's most populous Muslim nation. He wants to meet the Catholics of East Timor, where sex abuse scandals have compromised the church's credibility. What about the Catholics of Hong Kong? They have been through a lot. They have been suffering under increasing Chinese influence. Why is the Pope not meeting the people of Hong Kong? According to the Vatican, the Pope hopes to extend his outreach to what he calls the peripheries, those who have been neglected. But that is exactly why Hong Kong perfectly qualifies as a stop. Except the Pope will not be landing there. And why do you think that is? The people of Hong Kong have been crying for the Pope's attention for years now. In fact, in 2019, when protests broke out in Hong Kong, Catholic students wrote to the Pope requesting his support. But Pope Francis steered clear of condemning China. For months, churches across Hong Kong would close their mass to the tune of the unofficial anthem of the pro-democracy movement. Churchgoers would sing glory to Hong Kong, but the Vatican did not come to their support. In November 2019, the Pope did take a trip to Asia, but he did not stop in Hong Kong. Instead, the Pope sent telegrams to the heads of the state of the countries whose airspace he entered. A telegram was sent to the then Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam. But in his letter, the Pope made no mention of the protest. And what's more, in his telegram, the Pope referred to Hong Kong as the nation of China. Don't you think this is all too unusual for Pope Francis, given that he is quite vocal about global issues? The Pope, after all, has spoken about the war in Gaza. He has spoken about the war in Ukraine. The Pope speaks about climate change. He speaks about poverty, migration. He has mentioned the Rohingyas, but he rarely talks about Chinese atrocities in Xinjiang or about Hong Kong. And why do you think that is? Because of a secret deal that the Pope has signed with China. You see, for the longest time, the church in China was divided into two. One was the official church that was under the strict observation of the Chinese official. And then you had the underground church, which was in union with Rome. In 2018, the Pope signed a secret deal with China. This deal was around the appointment of bishops. The details have not been made public, but broadly, it allows the Vatican to choose from a list of candidates that is put forward by the government officials. The deal was for a period of two years. It has been renewed twice. But does China abide by the deal? Hardly. In November 2022, Chinese officials installed a bishop for the Diocese of Xiangxi. Jiangxi, without the Vatican's approval and knowledge. Reports say last April, authorities in China transferred a bishop without keeping the Vatican in the loop. The deal expires in October this year. 
it is up for a third renewal. China may not be the most ardent follower of the clauses of the deal, but it will be extremely embarrassing for the Vatican and Pope Francis if the deal falls flat. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.